Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about a few different things. One is my thoughts on the Anthem demos based on how the game felt to me, based on the info that's come out about the game, and also games that exist like Anthem. I'll be forecasting what the launch will probably look like and what you can expect to see happen with this game. Do I know for sure what's going to happen? No, of course not, but I wager I'll be pretty close and if not then we'll have a truly remarkable one of a kind product on our hands. Just to put it out there, if it wasn't already obvious, this is not sponsored, I did not get any special treatment from EA and wasn't invited to play the game or anything, so this is going to be purely based off of my experience with the demos, opinions from people I know, and also what I've seen in the games industry. This isn't going to be a video of me trying to defend Bioware, nor am I going to spend this video bashing EA because I'm sure that's already been done to death. Also, if I sound kind of rough in this video, it's because I'm getting over a cold, I apologize. So, first part of this video will hopefully help you decide whether or not to buy the game for launch, since I'm sure a lot of you are still on the fence about it, but if you already have your mind made up and just want to hear my thoughts on what I've played so far, feel free to skip to the time on the screen now. Oh yeah, and quick spoiler, uh, I really enjoyed this game. I find it really fun, but that's not going to stop me from sharing my criticism, so buckle up baby, here we go. Anthem is Bioware's newest ambitious title, and as I'm sure most of you know, this game is another entry into the looter shooter genre, where players team up to complete activities of varying complexity and difficulty in order to acquire only the best loot. As with all new ambitious IPs, there's a lot of risk involved in exploring this uncharted territory, with a ton of new things that Bioware can do with Anthem. But something that isn't new to the games industry is having a live service. Bioware has expressed their fondness for live services, and it was no surprise that Anthem was going to be one. The beauty of live services is that your favorite games can be continually updated and receive new content over a long period of time, and they can even completely change the product to make it almost unrecognizable recognizable after many updates and years of work. The downside to live services is that they are a service, which means they usually have some sort of monetization, whether it be skins in Fortnite or loot boxes in Overwatch. But this isn't the part of the live service model that worries me. There has been a trend for a while now where games release either seemingly unfinished, untested, or just kind of bare bones, with the mindset that things can be updated and patched in or added later. And developers will end up making tons of fixes and polishing the product through many updates and filling it up with new content that the majority of day one players will probably never see, or at least play themselves which usually tends to take the better part of a year or longer. This isn't exclusive to live service games either, you can see this in many AAA titles. For example, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Destiny 1 and 2, The Division, GTA Online, Rainbow Six Siege, No Man's Sky, and most recently Fallout 76. I'm sure we could name a ton more games as well, but for the sake of this video not being an hour long, we'll stop there. There are countless games that took anywhere from 6 months to multiple years to really turn around or drastically improve the product. This trend seems to be going nowhere, as year after year it seems to only get easier to name AAA multiplayer titles that have a really rough beginning. Anytime it comes to live services, we run into the same issues. I'm a big fan of Destiny 1 and 2, but I'd be insane not to admit, while the first year of both games were fun, they do pale in comparison to the September DLCs that revamped the games a year later. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will likely be the case for Anthem. Now, I'm not saying Anthem will have a terrible release, or it'll be really unfun, or super buggy, or have terrible microtransactions, but rather, I think it will feel more like things are incomplete, and need a lot of refining. From the demos, I got the impression that there was going to be a lot of work that will need to be done post-launch to really have the game meet its full potential, and here's why. The community managers have been very open on social media, trying to give people an idea of what this game's going to be like, discussing certain features and answering questions, and I've been following some of them for about a month now on Twitter, and a very common thing I see in their replies is, not at launch. Now, nothing against those guys, they're doing their job, but it starts to become clear that there's a lot of stuff that just won't make it into the game for launch. For example, some of the biggest things are, no armor sets at launch, no endgame raid-like activities at launch, no PvP, no companion app, no trading, no inspecting other players at launch, no worthwhile rewards from XP gains after hitting max level at launch, no weird sci-fi alien guns at launch, no weapon customization at launch, and these are just things that I've seen from Twitter. People will be disappointed. So temper your expectations now, because not only will the Bioware devs have to work overtime to try and commit to these features, but they'll also have to be working their asses off to fix exploits, bugs, and glitches that we will all discover. And from my very limited knowledge of game development, I know that games like Anthem are very complex, and the solutions to problems require a lot of testing and a lot of people. Which means these will take a lot of time, and we know how much people hate waiting for fixes and updates. Especially after paying full price for a brand new game. 
Now don't let me drag you down from all that negativity. I know what it sounds like. I'm being such a hater right now. Truth is, I'm actually very excited for the game, and I'm always pretty optimistic that things are going to turn out alright, at least eventually. And I know there will be a ton of awesome features and cool shit to do in the game, but this is definitely something to keep in mind. And it goes along with what I was saying earlier about the game's live service. Like others of its kind, the game will probably go from a rough first experience to becoming something really awesome after many updates. But it would be a little ridiculous to assume that Bioware is suddenly going to nail their first attempt at something completely new and incredibly complex, and that the launch is going to be anywhere close to perfect. They're going to have to do a lot of learning when it comes to managing an ever-changing living world. Some would say maybe these types of games should get more than two demos two weeks before launch to help test it out, and I would have to agree, but that's not the reality we live in. Developers have to meet deadlines, and publishers have to please investors, and clearly not many publishers have seen it worthwhile to delay these kind of games. If you're someone who prefers more of a complete and refined experience, I would suggest waiting. Not to mention the prices of games drop really fast these days. I was able to get Star Wars Battlefront 2, the, you know, the new EA version, for $5 from an Origin sale a few weeks ago, and that game is barely over a year old. While Anthem likely won't drop that low, you'll definitely find a much better deal from waiting if a full $65 is too big of a pill to swallow for a title you're on the fence about. Not to mention, like all the other games I talked about, there will inevitably be more content down the road and game-changing updates that will eventually be deployed, and if you don't want to feel like you're a beta tester for another unfinished game, then there's no harm in waiting. I really, really do hope Anthem succeeds and proves me wrong here. For a lot of reasons, the main one being that more options is always better. I'd rather people have more choices for games, and I also want to play another good Bioware game. But for them to really hit a home run here, they need a ton of addicting gameplay loops, a worthwhile grind, a worthwhile end game, systems that are not punishing or game breaking, constant quick updates, and just stuff to do and cool loot to get. I've already had some issues with people who have gone AFK in a mission while the rest of us are down, so we all just have to quit and lose our progress. And there's been some major issues where we can't progress the level because of bugs, but again, this is a demo, so we'll see how it turns out in the full game. And while I'm optimistic that the game will be good, I also felt the same way about many other similar titles, and it turned out they just needed time and feedback to improve. Next, I'll go over how I felt about the demos and hopefully provide some insight on how things felt and how I came to this conclusion. Oh, and by the way, I won't be covering any of the technical issues of the demos because we all know how that went, and saying the game wouldn't load or I couldn't get past the menu screen doesn't add much to the conversation. Yeah, there's technical problems with the game, but hopefully they won't be present in the full release. First off, I'm going to cover the thing I have the most to talk about, which is kind of just an overall vibe I got from my time in the demos, and then we'll get to more specific stuff. So personally, the feeling I got from the demo was that this game is going to follow along a similar path to Destiny. I spent a very long time playing and following Destiny, I'm very familiar with the ups and downs of the franchise and the launches of each game. Basically both Destiny and Destiny 2 launched kind of bare bones. They had addicting gameplay, but my biggest complaint for the first year of both the first and second titles is that the activities did not provide enough incentive to keep replaying them over and over. There was a serious lack of interesting and unique rewards from the few activities that there actually were. Not only that, but Destiny has always suffered from the issue of not having any great benefits from hitting max power or any really deep RPG type progression systems. These things are what concern me most about Anthem. From my time in the demo, I found myself pretty uninterested in all of free play, which seems a lot like an empty place to go farm resources. The world events were akin to Destiny's where they were very simple and pretty easy to steamroll, even at level 15 or with a buddy, and most of my time ended up being spent observing the landscape instead of stumbling upon cool stuff. Besides the random elite enemies scattered throughout the map, the other thing in free play was these things called hidden places. Hopefully that's just the work in progress name by the way, but these are Anthem's equivalent to Lost Sectors from Destiny 2 in both size and rewards. After doing a bunch of runs through these hidden places, I didn't encounter or acquire anything special that I wouldn't have gotten from a stronghold or mission. It would make sense if you have to crank up the difficulty before going into free play to get anything worthwhile, but if it's just to get a weapon that's part of the normal loot table and not something actually unique, then it won't be worthwhile. With Bioware already stating that there won't be armor sets at launch, that leaves us with only non-alien weapons, crafting materials to make some of those weapons, and the cosmetic items to earn or buy through microtransactions if that's your thing. Just like in Destiny, the activities are fun, but I have not gotten the feeling yet, and I know it's just a demo, but that's kind of the point, you know, to give you a feeling of what the game's gonna be like. I have not gotten the feeling yet that these activities in Anthem have enough incentive or that the rewards have enough depth to keep the average player hooked. 
The crafting is a good start, but I'm not sure how much of a role it will actually play in the end game. If there's some way to further enhance, mod, or upgrade top tier armor and weapons once you acquire them, and you have to grind specific activities for those upgrade parts, then maybe we've got something good. But at the moment, I'm not sure Bioware has fleshed out enough endgame to keep people satisfied, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully there's a lot of strongholds and ones with some interesting mechanics, because I have a feeling we're going to be spending most of our time in those strongholds, and those seem like the end game activities, which kind of worries me, at least since there will be no raid like activities at launch nor PvP. Basically, I don't think there will be enough content or depth for a while to justify buying the game. World design and the environment looked amazing. Javelins and enemies were awesome, I thought the ultimate abilities of each javelin were pretty unique, but there wasn't any flashy notification or easy to read prompt telling me my ultimate was ready. I continually forgot about it and I'd love if there was a better way for the game to let me know without me having to peer down into the corner of the screen to see if it's full. There were many times during gameplay where I spent up to 10 minutes with my ultimate bar full until I realized, oh yeah, I have this thing. It was a miracle every time I saw someone actually use an ultimate ability. For using my ultimate ability every like 10 minutes, I felt like that was still more common than seeing other people use theirs. And part of this might actually be due to the fact that ultimate abilities kind of feel a little weak, and just a lot of abilities in general. Especially when you have abilities like Freeze, which is a godly ability, that you can use every 5 seconds, I mean that thing is more useful than your ultimate. But I found it pretty funny that your ultimate ability, which some would say is your most useful and important tool, or should be, has no in your face reminder for when it's ready, yet the death indicator for when you go down just takes up such a big portion of the screen and is so obnoxious to look at. Like yeah, I know I'm down, but can I at least see what's going on to help make callouts to my team? Or how about a spectator mode where I can just hop over to my teammates like Destiny? Something other than just staring at a giant red logo would be awesome. Now going back to abilities for a minute, I felt like they needed some work. Some were way stronger than others. Obviously, freeze abilities were king. Things like the bulwark point bubble are just pathetic. But the biggest thing I had issue with was actually the melees. They often feel inaccurate or too weak, which is disappointing as someone who heavily relied on melee abilities playing the interceptor. Maybe it's just because I was a lower level so I wasn't able to one hit things and really take it full advantage of the power of my abilities, which could certainly be an explanation to why I felt like I was just tickling the enemies at times. But especially with things like the ranger, anytime I tried to do a melee slam from the air, it never connected with the target. It looked super cool, but it always ended up leaving me more vulnerable and there wasn't enough of a damage radius from my attack to actually stun or hurt enemies around me. Same with the interceptor's melee, and ultimate to an extent. I'd go up to a target and then swing and it wouldn't connect right away, or I just wouldn't be able to get to the target, I'd have to be sitting through my swinging animation until I get up to the target, it felt kind of slow and clunky, and it just felt super weak and I'd actually attribute part of that to the very unsatisfying sound effect of the melee. I was definitely a little disappointed with both that and some of the hit detection of the abilities, especially the spark dash one for the interceptor, that is atrocious. I can't tell you how many times I just whiffed the ability because I was pointed two degrees to the right. That ability specifically definitely needs some major tracking work, but I think a lot of the other non-flashy abilities also need some buffs. Gunplay was pretty good, no real complaints there, the only thing we got a taste of was the lower tier gear, so I can't attest to any of the really unique stuff in the game, and I'm actually kind of surprised that Bioware didn't have like, you know any masterwork or epic or legendary gear in the in the demo at least one thing for players to try out unless I completely missed it because I only did the stronghold once on hard so I could have very well missed it but I didn't see any epic gear or anything so that was kind of a letdown flying is super fun and makes you feel pretty badass until you went underwater holy crap is that the most disorienting thing ever and I'm not sure if it was because I was on PC or just because of how dark it is down there sometimes I find it really easy to navigate through and other times I just sit there with my head spinning because it's so dark and I just the controls are so awful and I'm sure PC controls had something to do with it but I'd much rather stick to flying above water it's definitely really fun to have a vertical aspect to encounters and being able to hover is really neat so I'm all about that the pace of gameplay feels pretty great too especially since it's up to how fast you want to take on the action as an interceptor you're almost always dashing and jumping and spinning in and out of combat which is a much faster pace than some of the other classes and I like that you have those different play styles available the menus boy were they a hassle on PC from what I heard, everything went pretty smooth if you were on console or even using a controller, but trying to navigate through the menus is so clunky and it just doesn't make any sense why the mouse only works in some sections, but then the keyboard only works in some sections. 
it's just not intuitive. I'm just not a big fan of the way the menu system looks or works in the game. I think I've been spoiled by Destiny 2's super clean and clear and easy to navigate inventory and menus, so it was pretty hard to adjust to Anthem, and I would very much like to see that revamped and a little more refined for the full game. Something I absolutely was in love with was the level of customization, being able to select different material types, and paint certain sections of your suit, adjust the wear state, and add vinyls. It was all really refreshing to say the least. I love, love, love customization and the fashion endgame, so being able to rock the colors and materials I want is so badass. The only thing I would change about the customization is being able to break down each section into smaller individual parts that you can paint and change the materials of, because right now, there's only a few categories that encompass a large part of your suit. It's still a lot of options, but being able to select just one small area of the suit instead of changing an entire section would be a lot nicer. So concerning loadouts and loot, if you weren't aware, you can only change up your weapons and abilities before jumping into the gameplay. Once you start a mission, you're locked in. There's no changing anything. This is fine for strongholds or story missions, but I gotta say I really dislike this feature in free play. Not being able to change up what I've got in free play mode is kind of silly. I feel like that's just an unnecessary restriction. And loot is also something I'm kind of torn on because the game is not out yet, but the way it's represented in-game feels kind of lackluster. This is a little bit nitpicky, but for example, when you're in the stronghold, you get a few chests along the way. After certain encounters, you get some loot, and when you pick up that loot, it goes into your inventory, but you can only see the rarity of the item and that's it. You can't even see what type it is. You can't see if it's armor or a gear component. So it almost kind of doesn't feel like you're getting any loot at all. And then when you beat the boss, you don't get any loot until the end screen once the mission's over. So it's not nearly as exciting as it should be. And I know they've addressed that. So I'm very curious to see how they can add some maybe more fanfare to boss kills and mission completions. As for just the overall gameplay, it felt surprisingly good. I really love the combo system, it adds a nice layer of depth to the combat, and being able to coordinate priming and detonating is really fun. Although I'm not sure I see the average player really taking full advantage of the combo system, since it does require some learning and coordination, and most people probably just want to spam abilities, shoot some aliens in the face, and fly around like Iron Man. I haven't played enough with each javelin to nail down exactly how good each of them feel, or whether or not one needs a buff over the other. And lastly, some things that I want to see added in the game that I was kind of surprised were not a feature already include FOV slider, inspecting other players, some way to contact other players in-game via some sort of text chat, a better way of knowing when your teammates are down, maybe some kind of obvious notification because if you're not within sight of them, you can't even tell that your teammates are down. Reducing the stun mechanic for your javelin. If you kept getting hit multiple times by enough damage, it would keep stunning your javelin over and over and you couldn't fly away and escape, which was really frustrating, especially as someone who's the interceptor and as a class that's supposed to be able to get in and out of combat quickly. Some kind of advanced icon mode that gives you more information or maybe even the addition of a minimap you can toggle because the compass can kind of feel useless at times and hard to read. With all that said, again, I really do like the game. And I think it'll be pretty fun, but I am really interested in seeing how the first year or so of the game turns out because it's going to be a roller coaster for sure. It's going to have its ups and downs and probably be pretty rough. So that about does it for this video. If you're still here, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on and hopefully my voice wasn't too obnoxious to listen to. A few more days and I should be over this cold, thankfully. Hopefully this helped you figure out, you know, how you want to approach the game. And even if you're still unsure, there's really no rush. Just wait and see how it turns out. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.